Hello and welcome to my review of the Soros Astrolith Bearer for Seraphon for Warhammer Age of Sigmar from Games Workshop. One of these models uh, will cost you £27.50 and consists of 14 plastic components. There are no options, there are no spare parts, what you see is what you get. Which makes me put the question to you all, the question that is hopefully answered in the end of this review, is, is this model worth the £27.50 for one single miniature for a, I say niche, um, not a you know, big mainstream Warhammer Age of Sigmar army? Let's find out. The format of this review will be as usual. I will have a look at the model up close and personal, look at all the detail, uh, discuss how easy it was to build. Then I'll go straight into some size comparisons with uh, the other new uh, miniatures in the Seraphon range. And then at the end of the video, I'll go through all of the rules found in the brand new third edition Seraphon Battle Tome. Now a little bit of a disclaimer, um, I picked up this model quite late uh, in the release. I didn't pick it up on release along with the Skink Starseer. I just couldn't justify about 50 odd pounds on two <laughs> Seraphon miniatures when I know that the uh, sort of start collecting um, box set or whatever it's going to call the Vanguard box set is, is just around the corner and is probably with a discount only going to cost about 60 or 70 pounds. So to have two miniatures cost almost in that same price range felt like a lot um, to me. But I was in a position, um, thankfully, uh, to finally pick up these two new releases, unbox them and now review them. So apologies for them being a little bit late, but I'm pleased to now cover them. So the miniature itself then, uh, it, it's a fantastic mini. I was on the fence about the £27.50, but the banner you know, this, this standard bearer banner thing it is just so good. It's huge. It's bigger than I expected it to be. <laughs> Insert joke here. Um, uh, and it's just, it's such an iconic centerpiece for your Seraphon army. Um, the, the model is really cool. I like the Celestite Club, I think it is. I like the headdress. The, the Soros um, warrior looks great and and goes particularly well with other Soruses and even the Croxagores. Um, as I say, it's it's all about this astrolith right here. If you didn't already know, it's uh, inscribed with complex geometric and astrological symbols. It's a conduit for the power of Azir. And it really is that big focus point. Um, the rest of the model is quite cool. There's a little bit of a scenic base. I would have preferred a much bigger scenic base, some kind of swamp, some frogs, um, something, some lizards. I don't know, for the £27.50, but it seems like most of the, the money, the design and things has gone into this big astrolith. Um, the armor's quite cool in places. You know, little bits of armor there and um, a bit of a sort of chest armor and some um, necklace jewels. It's just a really nice mini. Um, yeah, you know, I guess they could have priced it at 25. That would have been a bit more reasonable. Um, but as it stands, it's going to be a great centerpiece um, to your uh, Soros Warriors. You can just imagine one of these um, being flanked by two units of 10 Soros Warriors and that, that looking very, very cool. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if you can see the, the detail on this, but it's what you'd expect for um, Seraphon, the new range of Seraphon. Um, so there's a detail on the astrolith as well. You can see all the geometric um, patterns. There are some mold lines, of course, on the astrolith, um, but they're quite easily taken care of. So no spare parts, no options. You know, what you see is what you get. Let's go straight into uh, some size comparisons then. Um, so of course, I do have a Soros Warrior right here white here <laughs> um yeah look you can already tell um just just from that just how big the astrolith bearer is um how big that that banner is um it's hard to notice until you start putting it next to other uh models other seraphon models here's a agrodon rider i mean it's it's taller than a agrodon rider let's hopefully you can see there just you know a fair bit taller than an agrodon of course um the Raptodon Charger. 
fair bit taller than one of those. Um, spawn of Chotec. Of course, it's taller than the Spawn of Chotec. And even the Croxicles, which are huge, these big boys, it's bigger than a Croxicle. Um, look at that, it's huge. So yeah, it's, it's a real centerpiece, a real focus of the, of the army. It'll stand out. It's what I expect most sort of standard bearers and things to, uh, to show. Um, I, you know, can't compare it to a, um, I can compare it to a, a skink, I guess. One of these, how small he is compared to the Soros. Um, but I can't compare it to a Carnosaur because I haven't got one of those Carnosaurs yet. I will definitely be getting the Vanguard set. Um, I think that looks great. It's a, you know, another excuse of me picking up um, some more Soros uh, Warriors and some more Croxagors, which I absolutely love, and a Carnosaur finally. So I'll be able to do a review of one of those. Um, but yeah, um, with a Carnosaur, when I built that, I'll show you some size comparisons with this Astrolith. Compared to the uh, Skinks, Starseer, which is the other model I picked up, which is actually a fair bit more expensive. You know, there you go. I mean, it's an odd one. I was expecting the Skink Starseer to be bigger, but then again, if you know how small Skinks are, then yeah, if you can see the sort of hovering dial and things he stood on, you'll you kind of understand that it's going to be quite small. But there are a fair few options and poses and things you can go for the Starseer. But I sort of thought I'd, um, you know, Give you that comparison between them um is it a fair comparison well in terms of sizes it i think it is in terms of value for money and what you're getting yeah possibly not considering the star series seven pounds fifty more um but you know the astrolith is one sprue it's not two and there are no options no spare parts compared to the three miniatures i normally compare my minis to right here so we've got a normal space marine right here so bigger than a space marine uh, compared to slime arbo a bit bigger and of course an intercessor i think the headdress makes the soros bigger than an intercessor and of course you know the astrolith is like double the size of a intercessor so it just gives you an idea of just how big one of these is it's actually very similar size to a Redemptor Dreadnought and possibly a little bit taller than a Leviathan. Okay, you've reached my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for the Soros Astrolith Bearer. Uh, you'll find him in the Seraphon Battle Tome. He does count as a leader, so you can use him as your leader and he will cost you 140 points. Put it in perspective, it's actually more points than the Soros Old Blood, but cheaper than the 175 points Soros Scar Veteran on Agrodon. His stat line reads, he's a movement of five inches, a save of four plus, bravery eight and six wounds. He's armed with a Celestite War Club, um, which is a melee weapon. It's a range of two inches. It's got four attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus one to rend and damage two. It's a very strong weapon, you know, with those four attacks. Celestial Conduit. So this astrolith uh, increases the flow of celestial magic in the vicinity and you add one to casting rolls for friendly Seraphon wizards within 12 inches of any friendly units with disability. In addition, add six inches to the range of any spells cast by friendly Seraphon Wizards within 12 inches of any friendly units with disability. That's fantastic. Um, you know, you're adding the extra six inches um, to, to wizards within 12 inches of it. Revivifying energies, I think I pronounced that correct. Uh, friendly Seraphon units have a ward of six plus while they are wholly within 12 inches of any friendly units with disability. That's fantastic that you're now getting this uh, ward save of six plus. Um, just for being, you know, they've got to be wholly within 12 inches, but when you think about it, it it's kind of like a 24 inch um, bubble, you know, so 12 inches from any part of him, you know, to the other 12 inches, that's a nice, you know, 20, if you can fit all of your um, models in that 24 inch bubble, that's going to be great. 
Mighty Soros Jaws. Each time this unit fights after all of its attacks have been resolved, pick one enemy unit within one inch of this unit and roll three dice. Uh, these dice rolls are referred to as bite rolls. For each bite roll of a six plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So that works a little bit different um, than the normal Soros Warriors. Normal Soros Warriors only get one dice, but this chap, for some reason, gets three dice. Keywords, Order, Seraphon, Soros, Hero, Totem, Astrolith, Bearer. So there you go, that is the Astrolith Bearer. Great model, a bit pricey, but I do think that you get what you pay for with this one because that Astrolith is massive and it's very well detailed. Um, and it's a lovely looking and well posed model. And it will be the centerpiece, especially if you want to um, build your Seraphon army around Soros and um, Croxigors and Carnosaurs, things like that, and Agrodon uh, Lancers too. What do you guys think of the Soros Astrolith Bearer? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Lord Croak protects.